Okay, anyone else next? Oh, seven and a half kilometers. Is But if the Earth curves away at the same rate you're falling, then you go around in a nice circle. But that requires eight and a half kilometers a second. Okay, one more, or should we go on to the next? You guys ready for the next? Yeah. We're ready for the next, I think. Okay, so this one is number two. Welcome to the Exploratorium. So now that you're here, I'll point out that all around Splowland and Exploratorium, there are these black kiosks. And the black kiosks give you teleports to our giant exhibits. And so if you ever want to return, just go to either arrival point, find the giant black kiosk, and click on whichever exhibit you want, and it will teleport you there. We started our presence in Second Life by doing a live webcast of an eclipse. And I'm going to take you over to the uh, amphitheater, which we, we watched the eclipse in Turkey from an ancient Roman amphitheater. And so we built a full-scale model of that here in Second Life. So uh, let's walk over this way. And also notice the wonderful parabolic trajectories of the jumping water fountain. And if you use your camera to look at the giant pie sculpture, you'll see it's reflected in the water below. <coughs> That's a classic trick. We have an upside down pie. I was looking at the pie so, under the water. Not ah, good. So just fly into the area. So this is where we do our, our presentations of our planetary business. It's where we do, we, we've done two eclipses here, and a transit of Venus. And then on November 4th, NASA had the epoxy satellite, which took a picture of Comet Hartley 2. And one hour after they released the picture, we made this scale model of the comet and uh, textured it with the image sent back by NASA. So Second Life allows you to do some amazing things very quickly. And uh, now they're promised to release a higher resolution image and as soon as they do, we'll put it on this model. We've also done, when the L-Cross satellite smashed into the moon, we did a model of that, just like the one you saw for the asteroid hitting Mars. So, uh, there are nice little sitting pads here. When we did the eclipse, <coughs> over a million people watched on television but they only watched for a few minutes. And several thousand people were live in the museum. And they watched for eight hours, because we had lots of programs. And in the, in the real path of the eclipse, 
many tens of thousands of people got to see it. And when that happens, in 2017, a total solar eclipse is going to cross the entire United States. Don't miss it. <laughs> You're going to have to drive a couple hundred miles south. It's going to go from the Washington-Oregon border to the North Carolina-South Carolina border, crossing the entire United States. And so it's an amazing experience. I've seen eight total solar eclipses, and I'm the one that runs those programs for the exploratory. Now in Second Life, we watch the eclipse on this screen, and right now I think the server is down. But that's the way it goes in Second Life sometimes. Um, however, in Second Life, we had avatars visiting and watching the live webcast of the eclipse for over an hour. And the great thing was it was a social experience. So we had observers who lived in Japan and observers who lived in Finland sitting next to each other in this amplifier, in, the, in this amphitheater, talking to each other about what they were seeing on the screen. And they stayed for the full hour. And that's when I realized the power of Second Life as a social science learning experience. So, uh, other questions? I think that's what I like the most about Second Life. We, we've explained it as, when you go to the web, there could be 10 other people looking at that website, but you'd never know it. But in Second Life, uh, and especially in educational settings, you're, you're able to talk to people at other colleges, people completely on the other side of the world, and, and make friends with, you know, that, you, you get colleagues across the world very quickly. That's exactly right. So we have this museum in this flow, which makes fun of museum exhibits. And one exhibit there is the color blindness test, which we printed in black and white. So it's a complete joke. Uh, and we had a perception researcher from Japan, a professor of perception, who stumbled into the wrong building. And he wrote me a scathing letter <laughs> saying, you can't do color testing in black and white. And so I had to write back to him and say, it's a joke. <laughs> and he wrote a very nice letter back. And he said, ah, it's, it's just like the Magritte painting. This is not a pipe. And from that answer, I realized that he really got it, that it was a joke. And so we struck up a friendship in second line. <laughs> well, that was going to be the, uh, the last stop on my tour. And uh, there are hundreds of exhibits to explore. Uh, if, if you wanted to stay a few more minutes, I could take you to the Eclipse ones. Is there but, uh, otherwise, I'll just take questions. Yeah, is there a, a, a web page that lists all the exhibits, or you just have to kind of walk around and find them? Oh, there, there is a web page that lists many of the exhibits, but it doesn't give all the locations. Now, what I'm doing right now we're just rebuilding the entire Exploratorium Sim. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a complete index. And then the next thing we'll do in the next couple months is completely redesign the Sploland Sim. And I'll do the same thing. So, so uh, just the things grew at random. <laughs> the, the, that web page, would that be on the Exploratorium web page? Uh, the, the Exploratorium, if you go to the Exploratorium main page, and you type in Second Life in the search box, it will actually uh, give you information about our presence in Second Life. But let me actually, uh, I'll go away for just a minute or two, and I'll get the link to the correct web page. Sounds good.